far from traffic investigations. Thank you. That's uh, Sergeant Mike Farr, F-A-R-R, Denver Police Traffic Investigations Unit. Here today to update you on a uh, fatal accident investigation that uh, we investigated last night at the location of uh, First Avenue and Downing Street at about 7.35 p.m. District officers and traffic investigators were called uh, to that location on what was initially reported to us as a, uh, an auto versus bicycle collision that was also a hit and run. Uh, once we arrived on scene, we were able to clarify that uh, a bicyclist was not involved and it was in fact a pedestrian. So this crash uh, will be an auto pedestrian crash. And while initially reported to us as a hit and run, it was discovered that the uh, driver of the automobile um, traveled from the location of the crash at Downing Street to Race Street, where he did come to a stop, uh, did make a phone call to uh, uh, 911 and reported that he was in a crash and waited there for officers to uh, respond. So this crash will not be classified as a hit and run from that standpoint because he did uh, make that phone call. However, officers did, upon uh, contacting the driver of the vehicle, uh, discovered uh, signs that he was uh, intoxicated. And so we have uh, uh, investigated him for having been driving under the influence. Uh, those test results will, for a chemical test will not be known for some weeks. So I do not have a, a BAC for you. Only to say that uh, he did have indications of uh, impairment when he was uh, contacted. Uh, so the driver of the car is identified as Jesus Carino. He is a 23-year-old uh, male, is a Denver resident. He has been arrested for investigation of vehicular homicide and driving under the influence. Obviously, as this investigation moves forward, we'll eventually uh, present this case to the district attorney for an official filing of charges. Whatever they file in the end, of course, is, is up to them. Uh, we uh, did learn that our victim last night, the pedestrian, uh, Colleen O'Connor, uh, last night we received information, which I believe has been confirmed today, that uh, she was uh, one of our friends in the media, uh, a member of the uh, Denver Post reporter team. And so if that information has been out there, uh, I believe we've confirmed that she was, in fact, an employee of the Denver Post. So our condolences to our friends in the media for, for this loss. So at this point, uh, that's really the wrap-up for the information I have. If there's any questions... No, no, it appears as though he is traveling on First Avenue eastbound, uh, is uh, crossing the intersection on a green light when uh, strikes the pedestrian. So we believe that the pedestrian uh, is in the intersection against the signal light. Um, and then it takes him eight blocks. So we're talking downing to approximately race eight blocks to come to a stop. But he does stop. He does remain there, does make a call to uh, the police. But uh, I don't believe he was turning off the street. It was through on East First Avenue. That's what the witnesses tell us, is that the automobile had the green light and that the uh, pedestrian was in the roadway against the signal. So the caution there, obviously, is this. Uh, you, you have to obey those signals. It's, it's the safest way for our automobiles, for our pedestrians, for our bicyclists, for our scooter riders to interact with each other safely as the signals are there for your help and your protection. And uh, apart from being a law violation, it's just the safest way to get across the, the busy streets of Denver. Well, we haven't had a chance to do that analysis yet, so that's going to come as the investigation moves forward. Uh, yes, we do have uh, reason to believe he was uh, driving under the influence, and that is under investigation. I don't know. I, I, we haven't uh, completed the investigation. That's all part of the background. Yes. So he is under investigation for vehicular homicide and driving under the influence. You know, that's the information the DA will get to consider. If they choose to add hit and run, that's going to be their purview. Uh, from the uh, law, it really requires you to stop, uh, try to render aid to anyone who is injured, which he did through a call through EMS. 
Is it traditional to go back and, and actually render that aid in person? Well, again, that's going to be for the DA to make a decision. Um, he did fulfill the requirement of notifying the police and remaining there until the police arrived. So uh, from our standpoint, uh, it will not be investigated as a hit and run, but if the DA chooses to accept that charge, that is their decision to make. No, we won't go into specifics of those indications at this time. We don't have a, a bicycle involved in this crash at all. Yeah. Correct. She was transported and declared at the hospital. Uh, as I've explained, we will present this case to the district attorney. We have that requirement within 72 hours of an arrest. We present the case and the DA has the final decision what charges, if any, are filed. So um, that will come through the DA's office within the next three days. Right. You know, I couldn't address that without really looking at the stats of that. Uh, there are crashes that occur there that I'm never involved in because they don't involve serious injury or fatal injury. And so for me to uh, address that now without having the, the stats, I think would be unwise. I just don't know. I'm getting a sign that that about wraps us up, so thank you. Again, our condolences to the Denver Post and our friends in the media for the loss.